Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Dilip from Bali Rameshwar Science Academy and today we are going to discuss a topic that is all over the news that is the locust attack. To begin with, what is locust? Locusts are large herbivorous insects that can be serious pests of agriculture due to their ability to form dense and highly mobile swarms. So basically they are very similar to the grasshoppers But there are few differences that are noticeable that is these locusts have the ability to form mobile swarms so swarms means when large number of insects group together and move in groups that is called as swarms and these are the species of short horned grasshoppers that periodically form large populations in dense migrating groups where individuals differ in several characteristics from those living separately so normally like grasshoppers the locusts also live a solitary life but at times they have the capability to form large swarms that is they live together then locusts and grasshoppers are same in appearance but locusts can exist in two different behavioral states that is solitary and gregarious we are going to see about them later whereas most grasshoppers live only in solitary phase the distinction between locust and grasshopper is often not clear so why this change in behavior is happening so if you see these two phases what happens is when the population density is low locusts behave as individuals that is there are few number of grasshoppers or few number of locusts here they behave similarly like grasshoppers but when the population density increases so when the population density is high the individuals undergo physiological and behavioral changes known as phase polyphenism so what is meant by this polyphenism so polyphenism means same genotype genotype means made up of same genetic material the genetic material is same but the physical appearance that is phenotype is different so for you to understand the physical appearance of an individual of an organism or an organism depends upon the genetic makeup of the organism but here even though the genetic makeup of the organism remains same it exhibits different physical characteristics such a condition is called as phase polyphenism and they form gregariously behaving bands of nymphs or swarms of adults so here this nymph is one of the stage in the life cycle of the locus in addition to changes in behavior phase change may be accompanied by changes in body shape and color and in fertility physiology and survival the scale of population increase and migrations also distinguish these species known as locusts from grasshoppers so usually in grasshoppers there is no change such as physiological or behavioral change as you can see in the locusts and the swarming behavior which is absent in grasshoppers so here you can see the swarming locusts then the locus of our concern is the desert locust so this desert locust what is it desert locusts are species of swarming short horned grasshoppers belonging to the family of acridodea normally these are loners that is they live as solitary but very often they form large swarms and when they form the swarms they leave behind poverty wherever they go and hunger and what is the extent of this desert locust the desert locust extent is from west africa all the way to india and these desert locusts exhibit two phases that is first one is solitary when it is inactive and individual locusts live scattered and the second phase is the gregarious so 
when it is very active the individuals tend to remain together breed rapidly and form swarms which leave the breeding grounds and invade far distant tracts and even cross many countries so what actually happens the the locusts can live as a solitary individuals that is they tend to live spread across their natural habitats that is starting from the west aspect of africa all the way to india and at times when the population does increase what happened they tend to form as large swarms that is large groups and when they form large groups they have the increased demand for food because the local vegetation could, cannot further sustain the food requirements of the locusts so once the food is exhausted in that area or the vegetation is exhausted the locusts tend to move forward that is they move from one area to another and at times they can cross international boundaries and move to other countries and that behavior is called gregarious phase and in ecology and in ecology the gregariousness is the tendency of animals to form social groups to hunt or eat together it tends to induce the hoppers to start coordinating their movements and form swarms and if at all you see in the swarms all the locusts move in a synchronized fashion they do not hit each other and that is a wonderful behavior and that is called as gregariousness and why do they develop such a behavior in order to hunt or to eat together they usually develop this gregarious behavior and such gregarious hoppers are referred to as locusts and the scientific name of the desert locust is cystocersa gregaria which is also called as fork skull okay this is an image of the desert locust and here if you see in addition to the difference in behavior the two phases can generally be distinguished from each other by some anatomical and morphological features anatomical and morphological features if at all we speak you can clearly see that the solitary locust will be physically different from the gregarious locust so physically they will be different there will be some anatomical changes in the locust so here the extent of desert locust if you see they spread their extent is all the way from western africa to india this is the usual extent of the desert locust and here the locusts reported in india these include first one the desert locust and second is the migratory locust third the bombay locust and fourth the tree locust so here you can see two images of the same locust that is if you take into consideration the desert locust the desert locust in the in its solitary phase appears somewhat greenish in color but if you see in the gregarious phase a reddish hue will be present on the locust so this is what that is meant by the change anatomically or the different physical characteristics when you compare a solitary and a gregarious locust and there can be a transient phase between this two phases and because the locust can be moving from one phase to another and in a swarm you can find this transitions available so locust biology so we are going to study about the different stages in the life of a locust so why do we have to understand the different stages of the life cycle of a locust so because we need to understand what are the normal pattern of the living conditions of the locust what are the areas and what are the necessities for it to complete its life cycle in order we can prepare or we can develop precautions by which we can destroy this locust so the life cycle of this locust consists of three stages so first one is the egg so the adult female locust lays eggs into the soil and that is up to 10 to 15 cm below the surface of the soil and using its ovipositor something that is present at the end tip of its body it digs up the soil and lays eggs in cigar shaped structures which are called as pods so you can see locust eggs are laid in the soil the female drills a hole into the ground using the ovipositor at the tip of the abdomen and lays a pod of eggs which is sealed 
with froth and this froth so here it will be sealed with lot of froth and why this froth is there is it is preventing the eggs to undergo desiccation or any threat by predation so here there are a lot of natural enemies further locus to prevent them consuming the locus sticks that is filled by froth and it is sealed then the second stage is the nymph which is also called as hopper and this nymph stage if you see once the eggs hatch that is the incubation period is complete it will produce the young nymph the young nymph and this nymphs based upon their developmental stages they are categorized into different instars these stages are called as instars you can see the first instar second instar third fourth and fifth instar and this five instars are usually present in the gregarious locus whereas in solitary locus you can find up to another stage which is the sixth instar and once this instar stages are complete that is it comes to either the fifth instar or the sixth instar then for the conversion of this instar fifth or sixth instar into the adult it requires molting and that process is called as fledging the process of conversion of the instar into the adult by molting is called fledging okay and it leads to the formation of an adult the winged adult then here you can see there is an image of where the locust has laid its eggs in the pods these are the pods and then after laying eggs into the soil it is filling it with the froth to prevent desiccation or attack by predators then here you can see in detail the eggs are laid in pods in moist sandy soils at a depth of about 10 to 15 centimeters and at an interval of 7 to 10 days the gregarious females usually lay 2 to 3 egg pods having an average of 60 to 80 eggs per pod and solitarius if you see lays more number of eggs it lays three to four times having 150 to 200 eggs per pod in an average and the rate of development of these eggs that is conversion of these eggs into the nymph is taking different times and it is dependent upon the soil temperature and moisture then moving on to the nymph so we have seen about the egg then moving on to the nymph or hopper so after incubation is complete the eggs hatch and the wingless nymphs or hoppers emerge so you can understand that in the entire life cycle of the locus the only stage where the locus can fly significant distance is the adult stage because eggs that is not possibility if you see the nymph or hopper that is any of the instars that is starting from the first to fifth or sixth instars they do not have any wings and the only mode of mobilization or movement for this nymphs will include moving on the ground itself then there are five instars in gregarious and five to six instars in solitary hoppers in each instar there is growth and change in characteristic coloration the rate of this development is also again dependent upon the temperature and ideally if you see it takes 22 days when the mean air temperature is hot about 37 degrees centigrade and if at all the temperature is lowered what is happening the developmental process of these nymphs that is from one instar to another is getting delayed that is getting up to 70 days if at all the temperature is below 22 degree centigrade so in general it takes about six weeks from hatchings that is the nymphs to undergo fledging so fledging means transformation into adult and from one instar that is first instar to second instar the time taken is one week similarly for all the stages of instar it usually takes one one week then you can see this image where the women are just beating on the utensils so that to create sound which will scare away the locust so the next stage is the adult so here what is happening the fifth instar nymph molds into adult stage this change is called fedging and the resultant young adult that is formed because of fedging is called as fledgling okay so only letter one letter difference that is l okay so what is meant by this fledgling so this fledgling means the young 
individual which is not capable of flight yet and requires certain time to develop flight okay so here as you can see we are telling that it is not at ready for total flight so it means that it has wings but still these wings are soft and that is the reason it cannot fly and after a few days what happens is these wings get hardened and the sexually immature adult is capable of flight so once if you see from the fifth in star by the process of fledging it gives rise to adult young adult so this young adult whatever that is formed as a result of fledging is sexually immature so it cannot give rise to the next generation so it will take certain time for this sexually immature adult to get sexually matured and reproduce and what is the time if you see it takes about four weeks before an adult is ready to reproduce and once they reach the adult stage because they are capable of flight they consume they already consume even if in the uh, hopper stage or the nymph stage they continuously feed upon the vegetation that is available but once they reach the adult stage the amount of vegetation that is fed by them increases and once that level is achieved whatever vegetation that is present in an area will be exhausted and these organisms will be forced to move to other areas so here you can see if vegetation dries out the adults will leave the area and fly with the wind downward in search of green vegetation and favorable breeding conditions so here you have to understand the locusts do not involve in active flight that is they do not so if at all the direction of wind if you take into consideration about the direction of wind if the direction of wind is in this direction the locusts will also move in this direction but they do not move against the wind so they always go downwind but not upwind direction that is the reason why the locust movement is dependent upon the direction of wind and these locus because we have seen that they have two phases that is a solitary and gregarious the solitary locus usually travel by night and there is no fixed time where they travel when they travel and when they not but if you see the gregarious locus they usually tend to travel at night travel at daytime and rest at night and that is the reason they need large dry areas or large grounds where they can rest during the night then here in the image you can see the locusts that are depicted so the locust attacks that have been mentioned in almost in all the ancient texts starting from the egyptian pyramids there are different types of wall paintings they have been also mentioned in the bible and the quran so and even in the indian context if you see the locusts find their mention in the sanskrit poems dating back to 747 bc and here one important point what is the problem with this locust so the problem with the locust is that they are voracious feeders they do consume large amounts of food crops or vegetation which is very dangerous to the food security of mankind so here if you see the magnitude of the damage and loss caused by the locust is very gigantic beyond imagination as they have caused the starvation due to its being polyphagous feeder so polyphagous feeder means voracious feeds on many times so if at all you take the example of the silkworm so the silkworm you know is a voracious feeder and it feeds upon the mulberry leaves and similarly here this locus are also voracious feeders they continuously keep on feeding and how much amount do they feed so for you to understand on, a, on an average a small locus swarm eats as much food in one day as about 10 elephants 25 camels or the food that is sufficient for 2500 people in a single day and if at all the swarm is relatively larger that is a 1 square kilometer of locust swarm containing about 40 million locusts can in a day eat as much food as uh, that is eaten by 35000 people and locust cause damage by devouring the leaves flowers fruits seed bark the growing tips of the plant and breaking down trees because of their weight when they settle down in masses 
and here you can see the economical impact of the locusts. So if you see, it has been estimated that in India, damage to crops caused by locusts was about rupees 10 crore during the period of 1926 to 1931. Imagine the, uh, the value of 10 crores in 1926 to 1931. During 1940 to 46 and 1949 to 55, that is immediately after independence, the locusts did cause a damage of up to 2 crore and 50 lakh rupees respectively in those years and although there was there was no locust plague cycles which were observed after 1962 during 1978 and 1993 large scale upsurges were observed we will in a short while see what is the meaning of this upsurges so here swarm so what is the meaning of swarm we have already seen it is a large or dense group of flying insects so we have seen that different stages that is the nymph or hopper and from there to the young adult and then the mature adult so if at all a large group of hoppers or nymphs come together then they are called as bands so group of hoppers of nymphs are called as bands and if at all adult locusts come together then they are called as swarms you have to understand this difference and the swarming behavior of the locusts is classified into three types you will see what is this three types so first one is outbreak second is upsurge and the third is plague so the swarming behavior has been classified into three types we will see what is this first one is outbreak so what is an outbreak a marked increase in locust numbers due to concentration multiplication and gregarization which unless checked can lead to formation of hopper bands and swarms so normally the locusts reside in the desert areas and they usually live in the solitary phase but at times because of multiplication that is increased reproduction and gregarization that is they form gregarious bands because of this what will happen the number is bound to increase and once the number is bound to increase it will lead to something that is called as outbreak okay then moving on to the next thing that is upsurge so upsurge what is upsurge a period following a recession marked initially by a very large increase in locust numbers and contemporaneous outbreaks followed by production of two or more successive seasons of transient to gregarious breeding in complementary seasonal breeding areas in the same or neighboring desert locust region so here what you have to understand is so there is a period of recession so here period of recession in the sense means no locust has been reported or the number of locust has been drastically declined and after that there is a sudden increase so as you can understand upsurge surge means increase drastic increase so here what is happening sudden increase in the number of locusts is happening and that increase if you note is leading out to multiple outbreaks means continuous outbreaks outbreak in this period then followed by next outbreak in the next period that is seasonally the number of outbreaks keep on increasing and this is supported by and how this number is increasing continuous outbreaks are being happening because they are breeding continuously and the conditions are favorable for breeding and once this happens what what is there is the population keeps on spreading so it will cover large areas the next thing is the plague we have seen outbreak upsurge and plague so the present condition what you can talk about is the plague so here what is happening it is a period of one or more years of widespread and heavy infestations the majority of which occur as band or swamps a major plague exists when two or more regions are affected simultaneously so if at all you see the present condition the plague so initially it began in 2018 that is the locust infestation has started in 2018 and present it is 2020 so it is covering spanning about two years so whenever this infestation of the locust is increasing and it is covering a period of one or more years and it is covering a widespread area so here the present locust infestation or the plague has infested starting all the way from the east africa all the way to india that is what is the meaning of plague so covering 
two or more regions that are affected simultaneously. So here you can see the video of swarming of insects in a residential area, in a commercial area in Jaipur. Then moving on, what is the reason for the swarming nature of this locust? So we have seen that the locusts tend to live solitarily, but at times they form this gregarious swarms. So why the swarming is happening? So that is attributed to a hormone which is called serotonin. So this serotonin is a hormone that is even present in humans and it is also called as the serotonin is called as happy chemical because it is, a res it is responsible for the happiness okay but in these insects in arthropods and especially in locusts this serotonin is responsible for the gregarious behavior so here you see when the population of locusts increase or when they come in close contact with each other or it is because the density of the insect increases what will happen the insects come in close contact with each other and they may rub their hind legs and whenever they rub their hind legs what happens is this serotonin is released and because of the release of this hormone they uh, they face the change in behavioral patterns and shift from solitary to gregarious swarming solitary to gregarious swarming phase the swarms of adult locusts can travel up to 150 kilometers in a single day they rest at nights and travel by day locusts are generally passive flyers that is the reason why they always go or travel downwind and the hopper or the nymph stage do not have wings and hence travel on the ground so each swarm can contain about 40 to 80 million adults in one square kilometer of the swarm and each adult locust can consume up to two grams of fresh food per day that is equivalent to its body weight so a adult locust which weighs about two grams feeds equivalent amount of food that is two grams but when we talk about the nymph or hoppers they consume the food that is half their body weight and use of this serotonin because we have seen that swarming uh, nature of these locusts is because of serotonin if they use this serotonin inhibitors at a laboratory stage it was found that it is efficient to control the swarming pattern but this cannot be used right now to prevent the swarms then moving on some important aspects north america and antarctica are the only continents in the world that do not have any locusts right now so if you see you can understand why in antarctica because of the very freezing nature of antarctica because of low temperatures this locust do not survive and talking about north america so till 1907 there was a locust that had created dreadful swarms denuding lot of vegetation and leading to food insecurity in north america that is the rocky mountain locust but due to some unknown reasons understandable the rock rocky mountain locust has become extinct by 1907 and few of the reasons that can be attributed to this is increased mining agriculture and cattle rearing because of all these reasons the soil has been utilized and it may have damaged the pods of this locust ultimately leading to extinction of this rocky mountain locust thereby which making north america free of the locust then if you see the indian scenario we have seen that there is a significant loss about 10 crores during the plague period of 1927 to 29 so there was severe losses and immediately the british government that was in place wanted to take some steps or put some measures in order to prevent the economic losses that are caused by the desert locusts so for this what they have done is they understood that there is a need for centralized organization to gather information about locusts and control them this has led to the formation of the standing locust committee in 1929 and later the central locust bureau in 1930 and ultimately it led to the creation of the present day locust warning organization in the year of 1939 so whatever these organizations may be these all date back to 
before independence and the British government at that period of time had the only aim to totally destroy the locust and further their main aim was to destroy the breeding grounds and locust larva before they could fly because once they fly they tend to move large places and once they move to large places you cannot effectively control them so for controlling or for destroying the breeding grounds and locust larvae what the british government has introduced in india are first one is the cypress screen method so this method is called cypress screen because it was used in cyprus and what it is done in this method is the use of oil tarred screens to kill locusts so they are going to take a big screen like thing which is coated with oil tar and whenever the locusts fly they stick onto this film and they tend to die that is the first method then the second method is the net system so what is this net system so they are going to take a large net And using this net they are going to capture whatever uh, so you can see it is involved holding a capricious bag and swinging it around fields and trapping young locusts in the process then the third one is the dothar method so it involved using a blanket to trip locusts resting on bushes so dothar has been derived this method has been derived from the word dhoti okay so dhoti from dhoti what they have done they have used the dhoti or any blanket to cover it on the locusts that are resting on the bushes and thereby killing them the next if you see the locust control and warning organization so its activity is overseen by indian council of agricultural research and what is its main responsibility to monitor and control the locusts that are situated in scheduled desert areas so in the states of rajasthan gujarat and partly in punjab and haryana so what are this scheduled desert areas so scheduled desert area in india is defined as an area that is spread over 2.05 square kilometer in the state of rajasthan gujarat and haryana so these are the states where the menace of locus is predominant and here if you see as we have already discussed the locust control and warning organization which was established in 1939 was later amalgamated in 1946 with the directorate of plant protection quarantine and storage under the ministry of agricultural agriculture and farmer welfare and the main objective of the locust control and warning organization is protection of standing crops and other green vegetation from ravaging the desert locust which is one of the most dangerous pests occurring in desert areas throughout the world so if you see the locust warning organization it has two headquarters the central headquarters is situated in faridabad and the field headquarters is situated in jodhpur and also there is a research center which is present which is called fsil which is situated in bikaner apart from that several circle offices or field offices are present in barmer jaisalmer bikaner palanpur nagaur jalor buj palodi suratgarh and chur so these all are situated in the scheduled desert areas of rajasthan and gujarat and some parts of punjab and haryana because these are the areas which experience the menace of the locus then coming about this ppq so what is this ppqs so it is nothing but the directorate of plant protection quarantine and storage which was established in the year of 1946 on the recommendation of wood head commission as an apex organization for advising the government of india and state governments on all matters related to plant protection so wood head commission okay there are different commissions with the same name for different reasons so one of the uh, wood head commission here what we are talking about is about a famine uh, committee okay a commission that was laid to look into the reasons of famine that hit india and this wood head commission has seen that the significant uh, threat to food security because of locust and has advised the creation of the plant protection quarantine and storage department which was later or present under the ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare then moving on 
the control measures. So what measures are to be taken in order to control the menace of locusts? So for this, throughout history, farmers and governments have made attempts to repel the bands of nymphs and swamps of adult locusts by collecting the insects, creating noise as we have seen in the earlier slides, making smoke and burying and burning the insects. In the present scenario, if you see, many farmers in the villages of Rajasthan, Punjab are using large audio devices, that is DJs, uh, in order to threaten or scare away the locusts. Okay? But all this have very little effect. Then what can be done the best? So first thing is, first thing and most effective thing is the spraying of organophosphorus pesticides or organophosphate pesticides on the night resting places. Okay, so what are these night resting places? As we have seen that the gregarious locusts usually travel by day and rest at night. So if you can identify the night resting places of this locust and by the early morning, if you are capable of spraying this chemical pesticide, that is organophosphate pesticides, it is likely that the adult locusts will die okay so examples of different organophosphate poisons include melathion chlorpyrifos delta methrin fipronil and so on okay so here if you see in particular what the indian government is using or as an advice is melathion so melathion so ideally here the image that is depicted is melathion 50% but what is advised is 96% melathion. So as you can see melathion 96% ULV that is ultra low volume. Okay, We will discuss about what this ultra low volume is. It is used in desert locust control in India and the Indian government has advised in maintaining about minimum 50 sorry 5000 liters of melathion 96 ULV which will be maintained in order if at all any unforeseen circumstances come in and in india an agreement has been made with hindustan insecticides limited in order to keep this store of melathion 96 percent ever ready and the next is the new biocontrol agents and what are these new biocontrol agents one example is the use of locust pheromones locust pheromones so what are these pheromones these are sex hormones which are called as pheromones so what happens here is they have devised to utilize phenyl acetonitrile or pan which is normally governs which is an hormone that normally governs the swarming behavior in adult males who also use it to warn other males to leave them in peace while they mate so usually once mating is done the male releases this pheromone onto the female whereby which other males do not come closer to the female so this nature of this chemical of phenyl acetonitrile or pan is used as a biocontrol agent so if at all we are capable to release this pan the adult male will not come to the location wherever this pan is present so this can be used against young locusts to have a devastating effect so even you have vegetation over there but the young adults will not dare to come into the closer vicinity because of the pheromone moving on the third one is green muzzle so what is green muzzle it is a bio pesticide okay it is a bio pesticide so you know the concept of bioremediation so what is meant by bioremediation the utilization of biologically occurring organisms as a remedy to various problems is called bioremediation so here this bio pesticide which can be used for bioremediation purposes actually uses or contains the spores of naturally occurring fungus which is called as metarhizium anisoplae or acridium variety what happens when the spores of fungus are used so this spores of fungus will attach to the cuticle or exoskeleton and penetrate it so if at all you see humans we have endoskeleton means the skeleton is present inside the body but in insect there is no skeleton that is present inside their bodies but rather the external aspect of the body is covered by a thick structure which acts as exoskeleton and that exoskeleton in insects exoskeleton in insects 
is made by a chemical which is called as chitin and this provides the body shape and rigidity and protection to the insect from external threats so but what this fungus does is it penetrates through the exoskeleton of the insects and it destroys the locust tissues from inside and thereby which the locust cannot survive and apart from that other fungus that is Bouveria bassinia can also be used as the bio pesticide so once they use what happens you can see this locust all the green structure so this is nothing but the fungus that has grown and it has totally killed the locust and the next thing is insect growth regulators so what are these insect growth regulators so for growth like as you know in plant hormones we have auxins gibberellins abscisic acid cytokinins and so on similarly in animals for growth they need some growth regulators that is they will influence the ability of hoppers to mount and grow properly and they have no direct toxic effects on vertebrates if you see the chemical pesticide that is organophosphorus like melathion it has a significant threat to the vertebrates when it is used but if at all they use this insect growth regulators that is certain su uh, substances which will prevent this normal mounting of the hoppers into adults it will severely affect the growth and it will destroy the locus then moving on e locust 2 and e locust 3 so these are not the pesticides or any other thing it is a software it is a device it is an application which will help to track the movement of locus okay so as per the food and agriculture organization what it says is the french space agency that is cnes has developed this e locust 2 device so what it does is it is able to bounce the information of communication satellites and to have the data arrive in national locust control center by which immediate understanding about the breeding grounds or the location of the locust can be done and by which control measures can be targeted in those areas and here e locust 2 is used for foot transect whereas e locust 3 is used for vehicle transect so what is meant by foot transect so if the individual is going on foot and trying to find out where the uh, resting grounds or the breeding grounds of locust are present that is called foot transect in the survey methodology and for that the device that they are going to use is the e locust 2 but if they are moving on vehicles to find the nesting or the breeding or uh, resting grounds of the locust they use the device e locust 3 then moving on the last one is last but one is natural enemies of locust so as we have seen when the locust female locust lays eggs in the soil it covers the eggs or pods by using froth to prevent from predation so what are the natural predators so several species of small vast parasitize on the eggs of locust flies mites nematodes and birds also parasite and depend on the locust next so countries like china have a duck army a single duck is said that it can feed up to 200 locusts in a day and so are deployed against the locusts so especially china wanting to help pakistan by sending its duck army to meet or to destroy the menace of the locusts here you can see the ducks then moving on lastly as food so locusts uh, and grasshoppers are said to be the among the most nutritious edible insects and the amount of protein they have in them is thrice when compared to any other kind of meat so that's what uh, what happens is you can see here people do consume locusts but nowadays people are not willing to consume locusts because of the pesticides that are being used when large amount of pesticides are that are being used on the plants and they are again consumed by the locusts and indeed from locusts again you tend to get or bio accumulation of the pesticides by biomagnification can occur then other measures of locust control include mechanical methods such as digging trenches beating them and burning okay so by digging trenches what will happen the hoppers cannot progress forward by filling the trenches with some material like water or something then baiting that is nothing but scattering locust food impregnated with insecticide so the locust food is impregnated with 
the pesticide such as malathion and it is scattered so once the locusts feed on them they tend to die and the last one is dusting that is nothing but applying a fine dust impregnated with insecticide okay these are the various control measures of locusts then what is meant by ultra low volume spray so ultra low volume spray talks about the spray of low volume pesticide that is around 0.5 to 1 liter of the pesticide and that's what it is called ultra low volume so you can see it uses small amounts of concentrated insecticides in locust control about 0.5 to 1 liter per hectare is applied and insecticide is not mixed with water or solvent and this ultra low volume spray should not be ideally done on the hottest part of the day so once it is done on the hottest time of the day what happens the vertical movement by vaporization can occur because it is simply the chemical it simply gets evaporated and the effect of killing the locust will be minimized and here the spraying is not advised if wind speeds are less than 1 meter per second or greater than 10 meters per second because if it is less than 1 meter per second it will not spread properly if it is greater than 10 meters per second it will move to far away places and it will have a dilapidating effect on the vertebrates in those areas then there are three types of sprayers you have to see first one is portable sprayer which can cover up to an area of 15 hectares per day means by handheld devices example here you can see the handheld device which can be carried then second is vehicle mounted sprayers if you want to cover a large amount of area that is up to 100 hectares per day like you can see in this image then next one is aircraft mounted sprayers which will cover an area of up to 5000 hectares per day that is this aircraft mounted sprayer is especially used for breeding of swarms so it can be understandable that the handheld or portable sprayers and the vehicle mounted sprayers cannot be used against swarms the only method of sprayer that can be used against large swarms is the aircraft mounted sprayers and in some countries right now they are even using the drones to carry out this activity then moving on the present scenario so you can see the most affected areas include the eastern aspect of africa that is the horn of africa the arabian peninsula and then from there the asian countries including iran pakistan and india so this all problem has started beginning from 2018 so what happened from 2018 what is the reason for increase of this locus so if you see over the past two years beginning from 2018 what happened is saudi arabia has unusually had unusually excessive rain in 2018 due to two cyclones okay and what are the two cyclones it is cyclone mekunu and cyclone luban affecting oman and yemen also respectively okay in the year of 2018 so by this what happens is the arabian peninsula has developed the lakes in deserts which are called as in areas which are called as rub al khali means nothing or empty quarters so the transformation of desert area into lakes thereby which giving very good scope for increasing soil moisture and also lead to development of vegetation which has provided a very good breeding ground or increase in the population of the locus and the cyclone also did two things one is the desert locusts got favorable conditions for food and reproduction in their own backyard and apart from that the other thing is the cyclones altered wind patterns temporarily by which creating impossible conditions for the locusts to reside in their native areas that is in the desert and they moved down southward to Yemen and entered Africa creating a famine like situation and they have impacted almost the entire eastern Africa and parts of North Africa northward swamps crossed the Red Sea over to Iran and Pakistan and they were helped by abnormally heavy rains along the Red Sea coast moisture and greenery they got all that they look for then coming to 2009 what happened is by 2019 coming uh, by 2019 locusts had destroyed an estimated about 40 percent of crops in Pakistan creating a severe food security risk and slowly they started moving into India so normally in India the monsoon sets in from the month of June and extends till September that is the southwest monsoons but here what happened is 
usually in the second week of june or so the monsoons do arrive but that year monsoons arrived early by june 1st the monsoons also stayed over beyond september that is till november they stayed till late november and this provided a very good uh, conditions for the locusts to multiply and they have fed upon the vegetation and they have bred in the soil uh, moist soil conditions so what happened next by 2020 is so if you see by 2020 southeast iran and southwest pakistan okay received too much rain so because they received too much rain in january of 2020 again the vegetation is good and it drew large swamps from deserts and they have succeeded in multiplying and in early 2020 summer india is said to receive 25 percent more rainfall than what it receives normally and in rajasthan as temperature was not increasing no heat waves it provided a very good uh, condition for them to breed and further their population increased and that is the reason why they have come early to india then moving on if you see the food and agriculture organization which is headquartered in rome had declared three regions of locust infestations and they are first one the horn of africa so if you see the horn of africa contains different countries like eritrea djibouti somalia and ethiopia so the menace of the locust infestation is severe in somalia and ethiopia is the red sea area so the red sea area is also having very good uh, uh, infestation of is having a large infestation of the locust the next is the southwest asian region that is including iran pakistan and india pakistan and somalia have already declared locust infestation as natural national emergency because of their threat to the food security because of the threat to food security the horn of africa region is considered to be the most severely affected part of the three regions and this sudden increase of locust swarms can be attributed to climate change which has altered the rainfall and dry spells across africa and arabian peninsula leading to availability of food and breeding grounds then india in particular so you can see because of the outbreak it initially started with uh, the spread of locust desert locust from punjab gujarat maharashtra and madhya pradesh after arriving in rajasthan so once this they have arrived in rajasthan they have slowly started moving from rajasthan into madhya pradesh few into gujarat and one or two swamps into maharashtra and then even it is expected that they will move to bihar by the end of june so india is gearing up for what could be one of the worst locust infestations indicates outbreaks of infest uh, outbreaks of insect attack have been reported in gujarat rajasthan maharashtra madhya pradesh punjab haryana and uttar pradesh so on may 28 the delhi government has issued advisory for farmers to spray insecticides such as melathion and even though in 2019 gujarat and rajasthan have reported infestations it only said they were minute events okay and this year it could be worse because of the chain of climate events administrative laxity in several countries and different circumstances brought on by covid 19 pandemic so experts have warned that huge crop losses can occur if the swamps are not stopped by june when monsoons will lead to new season of sowing rice sugar cane cotton and other crops so when was the last big outbreak the present big outbreak is in 2020 but last big outbreak in india when was it so in india if you see the last big infestation was in 2010 so there were 13 locust plagues between 1964 and 1997 from 1997 to 2010 there were five outbreaks that were controlled from 2010 to 2018 there were no major swarms for breeding reported according to the locust warning organization which is going to monitor and report and control the locusts which is situated in jodhpur in 2019 gujarat and rajasthan reported a significant surge in 
locust infestations. Nearly 3.5 lakh hectares of cumin, rapeseed and mustard were damaged and officials had said it was the worst attack since 1993. This is partly due to unusually long monsoon but also because pest control operations were inadequate. Therefore, nascent populations of insects had not been wiped out. So why this problem has come up? So here in India, what is the reason is because these desert locust swarms have started all the way from the eastern Africa. So the problem started in Arabian Peninsula. From there, the locust moved into Africa and again few moved back and again came into the south west asian region starting from iran and then pakistan and then to india but the countries from where the swamp started could not effectively control the number of locusts that is because they were facing several other problems such as trying to fight with the pandemic of covid 19 so apart from this there was significant administrative laxity and the climate change is hitting hard so because of the climate change there is so what happens because of the climate change the temperature changes abnormally and the climate patterns in regions are affected badly so precipitation and rainfall will change drastically and because of this change in uh, precipitation and rainfall there was abundant rainfall because of the cyclones of Mikunu and Luban in the Arabian Peninsula and because of this more vegetation grew which supported the desert locusts and once their population grew larger the local area of the Arabian Peninsula could not sustain the population thereby which the adult locusts have been forced to move southward into Yemen and back into Africa causing a devastating effect and later they have moved even to the Indian Peninsula region that is because of cyclone Amphan and the western disturbances of the Mediterranean. So next what is the climate link to the infestation? The climate link to this infestation is said as because of the Indian Ocean Dipole phenomena. So what is meant by Indian Ocean Dipole? So you can see that the western and eastern parts of the Indian Ocean warm differently and tend to have an outsized impact in bringing excessive rains to India and West Asia. So you can see this image, the Indian Ocean Dipole. So what is this Indian Ocean Dipole? It is also known as Indian Nino. It is also known as Indian Nino. You know. It is an irregular oscillation of sea surface temperature in which the western Indian Ocean becomes alternatively warmer and then colder than the eastern part of the Indian Ocean. So as you can see this is the Indian Ocean region. This is the Indian Ocean region. So in the Indian Ocean region what is happening? This is the eastern aspect of Indian Ocean and this is the western aspect of Indian Ocean. So the temperatures of eastern aspect of Indian Ocean is different when compared with the temperatures of the eastern aspect of the Indian Ocean. So this variation in temperatures may bring high amounts of rainfall in the areas that are closer of these water masses but if you see again this based upon the temperature whether it is more warmer or temperature is higher in the western indian ocean compared to eastern or whether temperature is higher in the eastern indian ocean when compared with the western they the indian ocean dipole has been divided into the positive indian ocean dipole and negative indian ocean dipole here we are concerned about the positive indian ocean dipole so in positive indian ocean dipole what is happening if you see the eastern equatorial indian ocean of the sumatra in indonesia becomes colder than normal while the western tropical part of the Indian Ocean near the African coast becomes unusually warm. So here western aspect of the Indian Ocean becomes much warmer. So it is warmer when compared to the eastern aspect of the Indian Ocean. So it is colder. In such scenarios it is called as a positive Indian Ocean dipole. In such situations because of high temperatures near the African coast and here the temperatures are relatively high on the land so the rainfall moves in this direction that is the winds move in this direction carrying the rainfall but there is another aspect that is negative Indian Ocean Dipole in negative Indian Ocean Dipole what happens the temperature in the eastern aspect of the Indian Ocean remains higher when compared with the western aspect of the Indian Ocean so here Australia Australia is going to receive 
high amounts of rainfall because of negative indian ocean dipole but coming to the topic in particular if you see here what is happening a positive dipole in which the western parts is hotter by a degree or more than the eastern it led to one of the strongest positive dipoles in the indian neighborhood and brought a difference of more than 2 degrees and because of this change in temperature what is happening there was there was torrential rainfall that is very high rainfall the most india has seen in decades and it also had another effect that is this extended rainfall continued in seven parts of west asia Oman, Yemen, and horn of africa ethiopia somalia and kenya so much so that the dry sand became heavily moisture laden facilitating the formation of several locust swarms so we have seen that for the development of the locust for laying eggs it chooses the moist soil while the dipole was beginning to take shape in late 2018 the locust outbreaks were growing in africa it increased last year due to favorable winds it helped the swarms to fly and breed in traditional grounds in iran afghanistan pakistan and india so what this food and agricultural organization has said is it has said that the united nations has been sending alerts on developing swarms and somalia announced national state of emergency as we have already seen that is in february 2020 while pakistan has declared it as a national emergency for the second time this year in april and this unusually mild summer this year which saw several bouts of rainfall over the western aspect of india during the march to may helped the insects breed because of the moisture in the soil and also good amount of vegetation that is growing because of this rainfall so so far swamps have been recorded in nearly 50,000 hectares in rajasthan and madhya pradesh and if they continue to thrive they could be serious threat to the agricultural harvest then moving on how are locust inventions dealt with so if you see locust and we have already seen the control measures that is spraying of different types of chemical substances that is pesticides like the melathion 96 percent ulv so once again it is melathion 96 percent ulv ultra low volume that is protection by using chemicals another is what happened is india and pakistan had a treaty by which every year both the countries are going to exchange details about the locust infestation and india also extended its support to pakistan so that if pakistan agrees india could help in supplying melathion to pakistan by which effectively destroying the breeding grounds of these locusts in pakistan itself but because of miscommunication or whatsoever pakistan could not communicate properly with india thereby which the most needed thing that is destruction of the swarms in pakistan itself could not be done and here if you see adult locusts were forming groups and small swarms in spring breeding areas of baluchistan indus valley that is pakistan and southern coasts on parts of sistan baluchistan okay and these infestations then they later moved and they have continued east to central states of madhya pradesh maharashtra and leading to the strong westerly winds of cyclone amphan which we have already discussed which has affected uh, kolkata and bangladesh severely and successive waves of infections are likely to continue even till july in rajasthan and also odisha and likely to cause severe damage so if you see this normal baluchistan is a province that is present in pakistan but here we have talked about sistan baluchistan so sistan baluchistan is a province in iran so totally if you speak about baluchistan it is having two parts one is the iran part of baluchistan and the other is pakistan part of baluchistan so in the iranian part of sistan baluchistan these locusts have bred and they have also bred in the baluchistan aspect of pakistan and then they have moved into india that is beginning with rajasthan and then from rajasthan down to gujarat and from there to madhya pradesh sorry here uttar pradesh madhya pradesh maharashtra and also will continue moving further the next is adequate action being taken so what the indian officials are telling that they have blamed pakistan for not spraying adequate pesticides to stem the nascent population and because that population could not be controlled there what happened those locusts entered into india and 
India and Pakistan could not conduct the border meetings and divide the pest control responsibilities. And while the lack of funds and inadequate monitoring has been a problem for many years, so as Food and Agriculture Organization has also pointed towards the novel coronavirus pandemic which had all the focus and that is why the focus on the locusts has been given a le lesser emphasis and the natural disasters such as cyclones had led to newer locust attacks and you can see while the locusts are attacking the urban area so why are locusts attacking the urban areas it is most likely because they are moving in search of green cover so once they are in an area they are totally feeding upon the vegetation that is present over there and once it is done they are moving in search of green areas that is what you can find the locust attacking these urban areas okay then you can see as food and agriculture organization it is a specialized agency of the united nations its effort is to defeat hunger so it is headquartered in rome moving on you can see how does climate change affect pests so pests like insects experience additional generation so they keep on multiplying because the temperatures are favorable and second thing is increased resistance to insecticides and some insects grow bigger in warmer temperatures that is one aspect higher survival rates during winter months poleward spread of pests towards cooler climates and also impact of attack on crops and people is worsened so this is the thing that we can see right now because of climate change affecting so what can you understand how can you summarize all this is respective state governments are gearing up as per fao advisory and the menace of desert locusts can spread further east and thereby can even reach bihar in july and they are running with pesticide quantities and they are running up the machinery that is sprayers and everything and some states are also even putting the use of drones and they have put a new order of drones also so that in future they can effectively work that's what india is taking assistance from uk to buy the sprayers and what can be done what is the reason if you address the main reason of the locust population then you can put an end to the menace of locusts what is it is effectively mitigating climate change can reduce such natural disasters as the climate change is being hastened due to the ever increasing ghgs that is greenhouse gases it is raising global temperatures altering the weather and rainfall patterns turning the otherwise dry areas into water laden areas changing vegetation patterns and thereby altering populations of various arthropods that is insects here locusts in particular leading to such outbreaks of locusts which were otherwise routine but not devastating as the present scenario which can lead to further food security loss and may even end up in famine impacting millions so if at all you can address the climate change issue lot of other issues can be totally managed so this is all about the locus i hope you have understood thank you